Hi, welcome to this short series of videos on linear programming and mixed integer programming. The goal of this tutorial is to give you an understanding of what these techniques are and how to actually implement and solve problems using uh, tools that are available now. So first let's talk a little bit about what linear programming and what mixed integer programming are. On the left you see a system of equations. Um, it's kind of generally written, so we have uh, m different equations. Uh, each of the equations has n different variables. Uh, and what makes this a linear program is if you look carefully uh, at what makes up a single equation, you can see there's a, an, a constant value. So here we have a11, that's a constant value. a12 is a constant value. Um, and they're multiplying variables, these x1, x2, and so on. And then that's all equal to some other value over here that's constant, b. So each of, the, each of the equations are comprised entirely of a sum of linear terms. Right? That is a sum of variables, continuous variables, that are multiplied by constants. Um, and that's the case for every single you know, b1, b2, all the way up through uh, bm, or equation 1, 2, and m. Um, we note that these variables are in the real space or are continuous, and we do that by saying every variable x uh, with subscript i, so that x1, i, i equals 1, x2, i equals 2, and so on. Um, each of those variables are in, right, in the space that's real of dimension n. Right? We have n variables here. So let's look at an example of uh, two different variables and just look at uh, what a linear program might look like. Let's say we have x1 here and x2 here. And we have, again, it's a linear program, so you have linear equations. So we might draw our first linear equation here. Uh, and this linear equation would be described by the first, let's say, a11, x1 plus a12, x2 equals b2. That's our first equation. And then we have, let's say, a second equation uh, over here. And this one will be a21, x1 plus a22, x2 is equal to b2. Sorry, I miswrote this. This should be b1 up here, right? So we have two equations. And in this case, we have two unknowns. So we can solve this equation pretty easily. And we solve it by finding the values of x1 and x2 that satisfy both equations. And that, in this case, is this point of intersection here. All right, so a linear program is uh, a, a, a set of equations that can be solved uh, for one or more solutions. Now, when we talk about an integer program, the only difference between a, a, linear, uh, a linear program and a mixed integer, mixed integer linear program, is that some of the variables for the integer program are integers, that they're, they're discrete variables. Um, so here, again, we have a set of equations, right, 1, 2, through m. But some of these variables, let's say uh, xn, is actually a variable that can only take on discrete values, or in this case, uh, integral values. So an example here would be, again, if we could look at uh, plotting this out, maybe we have x1 and x2, and we can draw lines again like we had before for our constraints, uh, or for our equations, um, and we will then try to solve this equation for uh, where x1 and x2 satisfy both of these uh, of these lines that have been drawn on this page. So what we would do is actually, normally if it was an li entirely linear continuous uh, problem, we would find the solution to be right here where it's intersecting. However, in this case, uh, x2 has to be an integer value. So the integers I've drawn correspond to the dotted lines. So actually, the only feasible solutions would be along the intersection of the dotted line uh, where this uh, other line has been drawn. So if, if you look at this, actually there's no solution here because there's, there's no single set of x1 and x2 that actually satisfy the, con the constraints or the equations that we've written out. So we'll talk a little bit about how to deal with this, how to deal with integer programs. Um, the reason why you're going to want to use integers is because uh, they allow you to uh, compare different distinct modes of operation 
or procedures that uh, you might run into. A quick overview of the topics we're going to go through in this set of videos. First, we'll, we'll go over the makeup of the optimization problem, uh, optimization program, what are the pieces that we need to talk about. Second, we'll go through practical solution methods. Third, we'll go through how to handle integer variables. Right? We'll start with simpler examples where everything is continuous, and then go to integer, integer variables which are a little bit more uh, difficult. Then we'll talk about methods for improve, improving complex models. Naturally, the, the way that you go from uh, the, the reason why you might want to, to use these models is because they scale very well, right? You can write a, a, a set of equations in a compact way and scale them up so that they're uh, auto, you know, automatically handling uh, thousands of constraints and variables at the same time. But when you do that, you need to keep several things in mind, uh, and we'll talk about what those are. Finally, we'll give you just a quick overview of common notation and math that's used to write out these problems. It, it becomes more and more important as the problems grow to be careful about how you're, say, writing indices or representing sets um, or variables or things like that. So we'll just quickly go over what, what's needed in order to uh, express your linear integer program in conventional math. So let's talk a little bit about why you'd want to use linear programming or mixed integer programming. So let's imagine that you're in a scenario where you, you have a, a complicated decision to make. Let's say you're, uh, you're trying to come up with a, a schedule of production from some system, right? Uh, maybe you, you run a, a plant that makes some widget and you want to produce that widget according to some schedule, but you have to think about uh, when the parts that make the widget are coming in, when your labor is available, uh, what you expect to be able to sell as a function of time, etc. So you have this, this complicated decision that varies in time, and so you might, as a human, start off by you know, going along this decision tree and deciding, okay, well, first thing I'm going to do is uh, make parts tomorrow, right? And then second thing I'm going to do is order new pieces on Thursday, and so on. And you just keep going down this tree, and eventually you come to some decision where uh, you believe you've done a pretty good job just based on the information you had on hand as you were going through the process, but you really don't know whether or not that answer that you came up with is the optimal one or even that close, right? You used rules of thumb or what we call heuristics in order to make judgments about which way to go at each branch along the way, and ultimately you ended up with a decision. What linear programming or mixed integer programming does for you is it provides a rigorous uh, systematic way of searching all the possible outcomes um, or traversing through the tree, in other words, in order to get you to an outcome that is optimal. Um, one of the battles, though, is when you come to the end of the tree, you've made all the decisions there are to make, how do you even know whether that is an optimal solution or not? Linear programming and mixed integer programming have built in um, methods that give you proof of optimality. So you, at the end of the tree, will know whether or not the answer you have is an optimal one. The last, thing, the last reason why you might want to use LP or MILP is that it's really useful uh, to have a common language for mathematical modeling. Um, so when we're talking about solving large sets of e equations, um, and particularly sets of equations where we're trying to optimize some objective, we gener generally need a, co a common language so that we can communicate our results, make use of advances that others have made, and so on. Um, so these techniques provide that. The last thing you might be wondering, uh, the last thing we'll talk about in this video is, um, okay, I, I took linear algebra, I know how to solve systems of equations, you know, I have techniques for inverting matrices or for using Gauss elimination or whatever. So why am I bothering with uh, LP or MILP? Um, well, let's look a little bit more carefully at what um, linear algebra gives you when, uh, you when you're using the techniques that you're probably most familiar with. So let's start off and let's say we have some system of equations and um, they could, you know, we could pick a, a three variable system of equations, which I, I will write out. It will be so A11, that's our constant, x1, a12, x2, a13, 
x3 is equal to b1, right? That's our first equation. We can write the same thing for the second and third equations, which, which I'll do now. So now we have a system of three equations and three unknowns. We have right, one, two, three equations, one, two, three unknowns. So this has a single exact solution, which we can find for x1, x2, and x3. Uh, again, you, you might be thinking, I'll just go and use my matrix inversion, uh, something like this, where you say, right, my first equation has a11, a12, a13, uh, my second is a21, and so on, right? You fill in this matrix with your with your constants, and then we're multiplying that by some x vector, x1, x2, x3, and then on the right-hand side we have our b vector, b1, b2, b3. And I can solve this by saying, all right, my x vector is going to be uh, the inverse of my A matrix, my square A matrix, times B. And that will give me an exact solution for X. However, what this doesn't do is deal with situations where you have more equations than you have unknowns. And that's really the key to linear programming. So here's an example. Let's say I take this to two dimensions. Right Again, I have X2 and X1. And I can draw my my lines again where I have uh, a solution that I'm trying to get. Um, so this is kind of what we had before where our solution would be at the intersection of these two points. So what happens if you have a constraint uh, that you add to this problem uh, or another equation that you add to this problem that's like this? Right, so now I actually have uh, instead of one solution I have one two possible solutions, right? Th this solution and this solution. Um, now this, as I've written, it does not quite make sense because we have to introduce inequality, right? We have to say, all right, this is, uh, the solution has to be less than or equal to these lines, right? So we're anywhere less than or equal to those lines is a, a feasible solution. Um, but nonetheless, you have this system of three equations uh, with two variables and you end up with multiple solutions. So what linear programming will do is it will give you tools to systematically compare this solution here with this solution here or any other possible solutions that you might have. Ultimately what we're going to do is come up with a little bit more complicated uh, um, problem than just the two variable problem uh, and the idea here is we'll take some a battery system that has energy coming into it uh, and figure out how to optimally schedule that battery given that the price that you could sell uh, that the battery electricity for might be changing in time.